right, this is the electrical power cable for the control box. It can either have a plug installed on the end of it or it can be hardwired into your system. In this case, we have a plug installed on the end of it. So we'll just plug it into the wall here. And then we'll turn the controller on by pressing the on switch right here. This is the main screen that you'll work with on the controller. From this screen, you can set which program you want to run. Right now it's on P000. To change to program 1 or program 2, you just press the left or right arrows. It will display the set points for the voltage and current whenever you make a change. After 5 seconds, it will go back to 0, which is a live reading of the output. Right now it's turned off. Push the button, the set point will show. We can also adjust the voltage down and back up and the current down and back up, just using the left and right arrows. The maximums are 100 kV and 150 microamps. From this screen you will also see error codes. If we unplug the gun cable, after a few seconds you will see an error pop up. It now displays H91, which is the error for not being able to communicate with the gun cascade. You would see the error come up, you'd address the issue, which in this case is to plug the cable back in, then to acknowledge the error, press either the right or left program button, and the error code is gone. That covers the main screen. This screen is the arc detection settings. You have static arc detection and dynamic arc detection. That also clears out after 5 seconds if you don't do anything, so it might jump back to the main screen. These are for turning off the high voltage if you're getting too close to a part or if the part is approaching too rapidly. More information can be found in the instruction manual about how to set arc detection. This number is display brightness. You can adjust how bright or dim you want your display to be set. This screen has the maintenance counters. There are four user-settable maintenance counters, which can be reset and just run from when the controller is turned on. The bottom number is the total on time in days. You can see from the display that this controller has been running for three-tenths of a day. To get into the setup screens, you need to hold down the high voltage activate trigger for five seconds. A lot of these are reserved for future use, so we will skip through some of them that aren't as important. This is the applicator type. We only have one applicator type right now, so there's nothing to be done in here. This is the control mode for the box. It runs based off of current control. It's the only mode available we have for this box, so also nothing that can be done on this screen. This is where you select which type of output you would like in terms of communication with external devices. Right now, it's set up for discrete input and output using a DIO cable. It can also be turned off or can be set to CAN mode, which is Graco CAN for future use. Screen 3 is the selection for the input type. If you have an external device communicating with this box, you can select whether or not it will send a voltage signal to the box from 0 to 10 volts, or a current signal to the box from 4 to 20 milliamps. Screen 4 is similar, except this is an output from the box to an external device. If you have a PLC or you are monitoring the voltage and spray current of the box, using this setup you can determine whether or not the PLC is receiving these signals in the form of a voltage or a current. The ranges are the same, 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps. This is an unused screen. This is the CAN Purpose ID screen, which is used to identify this device to other devices on, in the Graco CAN network. It can be set to select whichever number you want to identify the box. And screen 7 is the logging level of the device. There is a provision for an SD card, which you can put inside the box, that will log the basic operating parameters of the box in a text file that you can refer to later. This setting determines how frequently those data points are recorded. The final two things you can adjust are the averaging interval of the arc detection and the blanking time of the arc detection. To get into those, press the select key from inside the setup screen. The first one is the averaging interval. This is the length of time in milliseconds that the box is going to take as an average for reporting arc detection. 
that is settable using these keys here. If you are finding you are having nuisance error codes or nuisance arc detection errors, you can adjust your averaging interval up a little bit to reduce the sensitivity. Blanking time is the amount of time in milliseconds that the box will wait before it enables the arc detection software. Because there is a ramp up in the voltage when you first turn the box on, it has to wait a little bit of time before it can start looking for changes in the voltage. Right now it's set to half a second. Generally this is a setting that will not need to be changed. Those are all of the screens you need to set up and run the Pro XPC Auto Controller.